What's up, fellas? I wanted to show you guys something I've been working on here today. Actually, I've been working on this particular device for a couple of years. This is an inline air dryer that I've built that is used for uh, carpenters. I'm a carpenter by trade, and when it's cold outside like it is right now, one of the biggest problems we have on the job site is our airlines freezing up. And I looked into inline air dryers online and all that stuff, and they do have them. And if you were to purchase one of this capacity online, you're looking at about $700. And it's about as fragile as antique china. So it'd be broke within three days on our job site. So I decided I'm gonna build an inline air dryer that you can run over with the forklift. We have an all-terrain forklift, a couple of them actually. And uh, I wanna show you what makes this thing better than the products that are commercially available. The main feature of this device that sets it apart from all the rest is the squib. This squib allows you to connect it to the air compressor and slide the unit back out of the way or somewhere it ain't, ain't gonna get totally destroyed. The ones that are online or the ones you can buy at Harbor Freight stick out the back of the compressor. You know that's just gonna get broken off. I mean, we can't even keep a damn pressure gauge on our air compressors on the job for some reason, let alone a $700 inline dryer. So this unit right here will run the entire job. We've never had it run out. Um, and I just wanted to do a demonstration to show you guys that it does not impede flow whatsoever. So I'm using a die grinder. Sorry about that. Now that it's up to pressure, I'll do it again. So as you can see, that's not repeating flow at all. So, I have been uh, building these things because I know a lot of the other companies and I talk with them guys. I often work with them. When one company is out of work, I'll just go to another. I'm basically what you would call a framing whore. I'll work for whoever's got the most cash. <laughs> I ain't playing that loyalty game with someone who's gonna ground my back into powder and then throw me out on my ass with no retirement. So that's how I roll when it comes to that. So yeah, if you got a framing crew and you guys are losing serious time from ice, I highly suggest you build one of these. Um, if you are a framer and you don't have the kind of tools that are needed to build one of these and you wanna just buy one, because if you don't have the tools, you're gonna spend over 300 bucks just getting the tools that I had to build this thing. The drills and the thread and the welder and all that stuff and the glass eye, it's not a big deal. You don't have to have that on there, guys. That's just something I put on there as a perk. This is probably the most expensive part of the whole damn thing, believe it or not. And it was very hard to find this. When these beads turn green or a dark color, this thing's discharged and uh, I've been selling these for 200 bucks um, like I said you can just make one you do have to put some kind of padding or a separator inside of here to separate the beads from the airlines I have a screen system that uh, is kind of my own little design you can work with whatever you want to use I mean it, it's as long as it works you're good to go but you don't want something that's going to ice up so you got to be careful with your design because if you have a bunch of screen in here and it just ices up right there before it even gets into the unit um, you're going to be in trouble you want to run this directly off the air compressor do not hook this up downstream you have to do that because the air coming right out of the air compressor is about as warm as it's going to get sometimes it's a little bit over freezing even when it's cold outside from the heat of the air compressor so it will have a better chance of not icing up from the uh, expansion effect. The adi adiabatic expansion causes air to get cold. Anytime you increase the velocity of air, 
you rob the surrounding area of thermal energy. Let me give you an example. Let's say an air molecule touches the a, a interior wall of this orifice, okay? And then it, it gets hit by the atom of the wall. Now that atom or that molecule of air has just absorbed energy from the wall. But now that it's going at such a high velocity, it's, it flies out of the tube and takes with it some of the energy from the surroundings. So now another atom comes in, bing. Instead of bouncing off the walls and, and, and bringing that energy right back in um, a totally elastic scenario, you cause an inelastic scenario where the high velocity air is making contact with the wall in some cases and um, robbing thermal energy of that area. So rather than a bunch of hits from the air molecules going through the pipe, you get these big Z's or these like um, peaks where the molecule is going so fast that it only hits maybe one time in the tube versus a bunch of bouncing through the pipe. It's just kind of how air molecules work. That was kind of a dumb explanation, but I hope you get my point. Anytime you have an area where the air velocity is increased by the geometry or the orifice size changing stuff like that like if you go from a very small hole to a large one you're going to get expansion and anytime you have an expansion you're going to get a cooling effect i can't remember the exact name of it but i'm pretty sure it's adiabatic cooling you can look that up so you've got to avoid anything that would constitute that geometry I'm talking about. You don't want a bunch of tiny little screen holes that are gonna increase the velocity. If you have a bunch of them in a wider area and it's a slow velocity, you're okay. You'll have a less chance. Because basically what that means is some 17 degree air can be cooled down to like negative five degrees with this um, adiabatic cooling or the adiabatic expansion. It also has the opposite. It will also heat things, but we're not gonna get into that. So. There you have it. If you don't have the tools to, to pull this off and um, you want one of these, just 200 bucks, just get a hold of me. I'm for the most part just sharing the idea with the framing community. Um, for you roofers too, you'll probably just steal one from the carpenters, but there you have it. This thing would definitely help you shingle as well. Um, if you're a roofer and you're not a thief, I totally apologize for that comment, but come on, man. We, we've got a bit of a, a problem where I'm from sometimes with some of them guys. There's, there's something about some of them roofers. I probably shouldn't say that. Some of them are good people, I'm sure. I'm um, sure you have plenty of thief carpenters, too. You know, I, I can't stand job site thieves. There's nothing worse. I mean... I work on jobs where you can't even drop your damn pencil on the ground. You walk back the way you came thinking, oh, there's my pencil. Nope. Some rat bastard's got it in his tool belt by then where I'm working these days. But uh, not every time. Not every time. I believe I did forget to mention that inside of this thing is indicating desiccant silica gel beads. They go from an orange color to a dark green color when they're fully saturated and when they are fully saturated you basically just take the end cap off pour these out onto a cookie sheet that's been lined with aluminum foil and bake them for at about 250 to 300 degrees until a majority of them turn back to color you're going to have one every once in a while that's really dark green that's just not going to turn back but you'll get about 98 percent of it back will turn back to an orange color you just got to bring it up to that temperature then you, um, you let it cool down and as quickly as possible you want to take that aluminum foil off the cookie sheet and kind of use it as like a, a funnel and pour it back inside the unit. It, it's a little bit of a pain in the neck if you don't know how to do it, but uh, I discovered using a piece of aluminum foil works just great. And um, there you have it. As I said, this here, you don't have to do that. I just keeps me from having to keep opening this thing you're better off just using it for the week and then taking it home during the weekend and just recharging it rather than messing with putting this on here because that's the one thing a lot of normal people wouldn't be able to do because you, you just don't have the tools on hand to do it 
but uh, the rest of it's pretty cut and dry. You just need a thread kit, some drill bits, and all that stuff, and you're good to go.